So, good afternoon, you guys. Would you like to introduce Hi, yourselves? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm your grandmother. Yes. Uh, my name is Mildred Paris Palumbo. Um, my nickname is Honey. <laughs> and um, I've been your grandmother for 18 years. Yes, you have. And it's been a pleasure to <laughs> know you and have you in my life. Thank you, Grandma. You are too smart and too good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but, you. Uh, so let's begin. Sure. Um, um, I'd like to start off with some basic questions. Uh, how long have you two been married? 59 and a half years. Wow, congratulations. 59 and a half years. You doing anything nice for your 60th? Uh, we haven't made that plan we yet. We really, you know something, I think we should wait to get closer to that original date yeah. before we start making plans. Six months so, off. Yeah. You know, we have a little time to really think about it, and uh, I'm sure we're going to come up with something yeah. original. Yeah, that sounds exciting. Yeah. So, um, how old were you guys when you first met each other originally? I was 20, and uh, Grandma was 17 years old and walked past me with her one-piece bathing suit on. <laughs> and I said to my friend, did you see that? And I immediately went and struck up a conversation. Uh, but I must mention that uh, we met at Coney Island, and I was introduced to him by a friend who was at the beach that day. So we did get to meet one another, hmm. and um, I think uh, it was the next weekend that we actually started to have a conversation and uh, just talk to one another and maybe like eye one another up and down or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we go do. up on the boardwalk and had some French fried potatoes. Oh, yes. that's nice. And then that night, um, Grandpa asked, well, you know, you know, what are you doing tonight? And I mentioned that I would be going to a feast uh, at a church that I belong to. I used to go to confraternity there. Okay. And we met that night, and that was the beginning of our courtship. Oh, that's It nice. started that night at uh, the feast at Our Lady of Loretta Parish. Hmm. That's nice. Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, yes. And um, we continued to see one another. Uh, but there was a little um, unusual occurrence that took place. Um, I'm the oldest of 14 children. Okay. And uh, I had worked that summer. Yes. And my parents depended on the extra money coming in. And it seemed that my dad thought it might be a good idea if I could get a job and help out. Okay. And I thought, well, you know, I'd rather finish my education, but at that time, things were different. We were, we had to help with the family uh, expenses and things. So mm -hmm. I got a job. Yeah. Nine I months, started. Nine job. months short of graduation. She got yes. It. Oh, wow. That was really yeah. close. And um, that did get me a little upset, but... I thought, well, you know, I don't want to be selfish. I did think of my family and my sisters and brothers. And, and years know. later, she got an equivalency yes, diploma. Yes, I, I made good. it my business. I said, one day, I'll get my diploma. She did. And I did. Go ahead. Um, so, really, getting a job was uh, a little unusual. I worked, and I would meet Grandpa maybe for dinner. Or uh, on the weekends, we would get Movie. to see one another, uh, parties. I got to know his friends. He met my friends. Hmm. We um, met family members. And we were getting to really know one another and the family. Right. And basically, um, that was the beginning of our courtship. So how long would you say your courtship lasted? Well, two years from the time we met until the time we got married, but in between, about after a little, about a year and a half, there was an engagement. Okay. Yes. Uh, Grandpa, why did you decide that um, Grandma was the one? Why did you decide to get married? Well, I knew, I knew it was time to get married. That, at that day, I know census figures, 22 for a male and 19 for a female was the average. Right. And we were coming right up on that. 
And I knew from the family background that I was going to get married. Mm. And I look, looked at Grandma and I said, I ain't going to find any better example than this. <laughs> so 22 and 19 is when we got married. Right. Okay, nice. How did you um, propose to her? How was your engagement? Uh, it just became like knowledge between us. We knew that we were going to do it. Mm. Yeah, I think it was we were in a park one day, which we would take walks to the park, and we were sitting on the bench, and he turned to me, and he did say, I'd, li I'd like to get married. I'd oh. like to marry you. And uh, I really didn't think about marriage at the time because just going out and dating was was fun and meeting a new person but it was getting to the point where I, I saw he was older older than me and um, he was looking forward to joining the NYPD hmm. with a very secure job yeah he was appointed november 1st 55 55 so i knew so the month okay, later we got engaged we oh. yes we can we can get married i mean having a secure job to me was very important right um as much as you know caring for one another that's important but you can't live on love <laughs> you have yeah. to you have to have <laughs> money so. yeah so, um, what would you guys say individually you were looking for in a spouse when you were young? Well, I had a lot of uncles and aunts and I saw all of these solid uh, marriages and I saw, you know, from family example, I saw this is what you're supposed to do. My parents were very close and I saw somebody here that was fits right into that mold. Mm. And I said, that's it, I wanted to do it. Right. Grandma, well, I, I, I felt like we had a lot uh, in common, our interests. We liked to go to the movies, um, the sports. He liked baseball. I liked baseball. Uh, dancing. I loved to dance. Oh, yeah. Grandpa loved to dance. And we just, we had fun together. We just enjoyed. And another thing that was important to me was having someone who had intelligence. Mm. And I could have a, a conversation with, I mean, other than silly things, we could really mm. uh, get into life and discuss things. And that was important. Also, a sense of humor. Mm. We had fun together. We would laugh and kid around and, you know, just have fun. Have fun. Yeah. Old movies in the 50s were very important to young people at that time. Yeah. yeah. So, when you guys got married, would you say... You had an expectation before marriage, and how did that expectation live up to or exceed reality? We married 59 and a half years. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, to me, it was a commitment. And another thing in our life together, uh, God was in our life. We had our mm. faith. We attended Mass. Um, and I realized this was a very important move in my life to take this person was going to be very important in my life. He was going to be my husband, my friend. And making a commitment to somebody, to me, was very important. Mm. And I always try to live up to that commitment and the vows that would be shared with one another. And we both had a background where we got all these uncles and aunts with solid marriages and we knew this is what you're supposed to At do. At that time, yeah, marriage was maybe, you know, a lot of marriages weren't perfect, hmm. but it's hard to have a perfect marriage. Right. It, you, uh, I, don't, I think you would lie sometimes if you say your marriage is perfect. Yeah. Because there are times when it isn't, but it's the work and your attitude towards one another is what is important. Yeah. So you guys would say your expectations pretty much met reality. You knew what you were getting into when you got married? Sure. Yes. That's yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. So you guys eventually had two kids, my mom and uh, Uncle Pete. Yes. yes. How would you say children evolved or changed your marriage, if at all? Oh, it makes it more solid. Oh, yeah. It's a commitment. You don't want children running around crazy. You're going to show them the right thing to do and raise them correctly. 
Mm. And I must say, I came from a, a large family of 14. Yeah. I helped raise most of my brothers and sisters. You're the oldest of 14. I loved children, and having my own was special, very special, that I felt that that was part of me and my husband. This is part of us, and I cherished being with them. I loved children. I loved raising them. I never regret mm. having my children. That's good. So we're going to talk about some like demographic types of things. How important would you say money is um, in a marriage? Do you think it could wreck a marriage? Do you think it could make a marriage? It could do both. It could wreck it or make it. But yeah. you have to, well, like we did, you save some and you spend some and you take a nice vacation. You, you know, you spend it on uh, nice things, you know. Mm. Uh, well, I remember we set up a budget. Yeah. We used to have little envelopes, yeah. and each one was marked with a bill, and then we had our little extra envelope where we could put things in to go out for dinner, to buy special things. Nice vacations. But we always mm. lived within our means. Oh, we yeah. never spent money wildly, bought things of, of, that you didn't need. My children had to have their clothing and their education, their books and expenses for that. Yeah. Don't forget, we come from the 1930s. It was a terrible depression, so yeah. we know we seem to know how to manage yeah. women. Yeah. Would you say, how important would you say having similar values and religion is for your marriage? Very oh, important. yes. Very important. Yes, I would say. Similar values, yeah. Um, because you want your home to reflect your religion and the, the faith and what goes on between people. You want your children to learn that. You want to give them good values. And I feel that religion is a big part of giving your children those values and, and having them grow up to be good, decent people. Yeah. Well, um, based on what you guys are saying, I, I think you would agree that having a similar culture was pretty important for your marriage. Yeah, I would say so. Sure. I, I, th I think working class background, you know. Mm. I think you ha you run into problems when you don't. But I'm not saying that you can't deal with them. Yeah. If you're mature enough and you can accept people's other religions or whatever, that's okay. But for us, our religion being the same was very important. Mm. Did you guys experience anything with your age difference, or did that affect anything at no, all? No, as I said, I know census figures from the 1950s. 22 and 19 was the average. Right. Yeah, that was, so it was a pretty average age difference. Yeah. Would you say couples that have like a 10-year a age gap, you think they might be struggling? Uh, the Depends only thing on the I, individuals. I say about yeah. that is you don't have a lot in common. When you are a certain age, there's a lot of things that go on in your life that you can talk about and be. If you marry, uh, you know, someone ten years younger than you, you don't you don't have things in common. Mm. Most of the time, you'll say, "Well, what do we discuss? Yeah. How, what do we talk about?" Yeah. Uh, that that's the only thing I think is uh, you know deterrent <clears throat> to having uh, somebody either too young or too old. Yeah. So, speaking of young people, what advice would you give um, to even my sister and I, people that are out there that are young, that are dating, and maybe they're teenagers and they might be thinking of getting married, what advice would you give those people? I would say take a look at the other person's background and you've got to see if you've got some similarities in there, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, maturity enters into it. Mm. How mature is the person? Uh, Education today, education is so important. You need your education to get ahead. Mm. And um, the person that you're with, are they, you know, thinking of all of these important things? Yeah. Are they going to deal with what you have in mind to do? Mm -hmm. are, they, are you on board with one another with a lot of things? Yeah. If you, and if you smell alcohol or drugs in this situation, that's not a good one. Mm. No. Yeah. Addictions. People yeah. can have addictions, and uh, you have to really watch for that. Yeah. These things, you, you never know. You never know. It's uh, it's a 
the chance that you take sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, say a, a young couple does get married and they're in their early years of uh, being married, they're experiencing some issues and perhaps they're thinking about divorce. Um, what would you say to them? What advice would you give them to get through that together? Well, I would say, I, go ahead. the first thing I would want to know, what's the problem? How serious is the problem? Mm. They're, they're, if it's very serious, then you know you would have to go for professional help. You maybe go to your priest and talk to your priest. But I say, before you even do that, if you're having problems, what actually brought you together in the beginning? Go back and see, what did you like about that person that brought you together? Where's, what, go back to the feelings that you had for one another. Mm. I think that's important and it depends on how serious the problem is. Yeah. And don't, you, don't forget, the church will even give you an annulment if they <laughs> sense that there's something that can't be fixed. Mm. Well, what would you say is an example of a marriage that couldn't be fixed? Unsalvageable. What do you think of uh, cheating in marriages or uh, infidelity? It's not good. Not good. It's it, it that can be a killer. Mm. It depends on the couple. Some couples can get through it mm. with a lot of work, and uh, you have to rebuild a lot. There's a lot that gets broken. And you have to rebuild all of that, and maybe some people can do it, and others, they, some won't even try. Mm. Some won't try. It, it's black and white. That's it, uh, you know, we're done. Right. Or some people will try with that issue. You say it's black and white? Don't bring race into this uh, situation. <laughs> <laughs> say, I told you he has a sense of humor. <laughs> So, um, if you guys were looking back at your lives, would you make any major decisions differently if you could? Well, as a matter of fact, when I was younger and I had a hard job with bad hours, maybe I was a little more grouchy than I should have been, mm -hmm. you know? And I tried to resolve that, I tried to fix that, you know, the, the nastiness. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do, you have to work at it. That's good. But you have to, I think, in a marriage, not only commitment, but communication is so important. Right. Mm. If you can't sit down and talk to one another and say, look, this is how I feel. What, what do you think about this? You know, how, how are we going to work through this? How can we get through it? Communication. A man, I notice, sometimes a woman might assume things about what he should do. Oh, he should automatically think to do that. But maybe he doesn't. He mm. doesn't even know you're getting upset about something unless you tell him. You know, I don't like when you do this or you do that. If you don't tell him, he might walk around doing this and he doesn't even know he's doing it to aggravate you. Mm. Yeah, you have to be honest with You yourself. have to be honest. Honesty. Truthful. Trust. It's a, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. So, and it's not easy. It's not easy. It's yeah. work, work, work. Absolutely. And, uh, religion has a lot to help. To yes. To help. Mm. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, I think what you guys are talking about, the two big things I'm hearing is, you should be honest, you should be communicative, and you should also be committed. Yeah. Absolutely. But if you had to choose, what would you say the one key to a happy marriage is? Wow. The one key. Well, you have to love each other. Yeah. There has to... I think if you, there's not some feeling there, there's got to be that, that spark. If the spark is gone, you can't light the fire. Mm. And I think it's got to be there for you want to grow, to be together. If you don't... I think that's important. Yeah. So would you say, say there's a couple and they have, they have no emotions towards each other. They, they, they don't have the spark, as you said. Okay. Would you encourage that couple to keep going in their marriage? Maybe they shouldn't have gotten married in the first place. You don't know. Like I said, yeah. the church will give you an annulment if you go through a whole rigmarole. They, get so, they lose it completely. Mm. And it's so hard to get it 
going again. And if you don't want to work at it, that's the whole key. You have to want to work at it and be together. Mm. And if there are problems, the person that's causing the problem has to change and make that problem better and get over it and make make it work. Mm. Yeah. So you guys are talking about, um, you know, maybe people shouldn't have gotten married in the first place. I think today there's a lot of possibilities available for people with dating apps and everything. They can always... There's so many people to meet, so I think a lot of people get burdened by the amount of options. So I think some people these days are encouraging couples to live together before getting married as a, almost a test run. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about that? Do you think it should or should not? No, be? that's against all religion. It's I, I, uh, I, I morally, I'm, uh, I'm not, um, my morals mean a lot to me. My mor, um, as a, a, a woman, I have respect for myself, and if someone else doesn't have it for me, then, then I couldn't deal with that. Mm. I, that's my personal feeling, but honestly, the morals today have gone down the tubes. The force rate is very There's high. no morals. Mm. I mean, women, they thought, that, uh, you know, women's lib was good. Well, to some degree, I don't, I don't agree that it was good. They lost a lot in mm. giving up their respect and their morality. Mm. The men do not respect them anymore, so they don't want to get married. I think more of these marriages where they live together, it's because the guy doesn't want to get married. And why does he have to get married? If the women just live with them, then... That's what the guy accepts. I think I understand. So you're saying like, the idea of a marriage is that it's this next step and living together is a part of that next step. Absolutely. But if you're already doing that, then there's, there's no point Absolutely. in getting married and to the people. Isn't marriage, it's a sacrament to us. It's something beautiful. Mm. And that's what your marriage should be. That, that, uh, that attraction that you have to be with that one person and it's, it can be something beautiful. But if you just live with all different people and don't take a value in that, I think some, something's lost. It's, and it, it never gets back. Never. That's a very nice note to end on, I think. Um, do you guys have any closing thoughts before we end? Well, uh, I know I haven't been the easiest person to <laughs> Oh, no, but, I wouldn't say that. But uh, we're going to work on this. Oh, until... that's the key. Work on, pro if you're married for a long time, work on every problem that you hit. And, and it, you never get finished working. You never hmm. finished. Well, a marriage is an ongoing commitment. I Like I've told Grandma so many times, this is my best friend on the whole planet. Uh, that we're, that's how close we are. We're a team. You know that. We're you see, <laughs> I do. In action. I have. We're a team. But thank you so much, Chris. Oh, it's uh, my pleasure. Thank you been, guys for helping me. It's been nice talking okay. to you. It's been nice talking to you guys. Okay. Can you. I talk to the teacher now? <laughs> sure, you can. Go you know it. he needs a good mark for this, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I told you he has a sense of humor. <laughs> That's funny.